Okay, welcome to another episode of Perkins Help for Accounting. Uh, seriously, this is going to be a short video over capital budgeting. So let me get me out of the way. And um, let's start out with just a simple little discussion of income over the future. Let's say that uh, you inherited a million dollars and are looking for a good place to invest. And you know you can invest in a savings account with a guaranteed income of 3% annually. What would be your annual income if you choose this investment vehicle? So let's say you put a million dollars, these are in thousands, a million dollars into this account earning 3%. So in the first year, you'll earn $30, and you now have a million, or 30,000, so you now have a million 30,000. In the next year, it'll grow another 3%, so if you multiply that 1030 by 3%, you'll get 31. You now have 1061, so a million and 61,000. So, um, in the top line, I've got the income for the year, and in the bottom is the uh, ending balance for that particular year. <clears throat> so that's an investment earning 3%. Now let's say that instead of doing that, you decided you wanted to invest it in a business. Uh, but the expected outcomes would be more uncertain, so you're willing to take a little bit of a risk and try to earn uh, more money. <clears throat> so suppose you bought a car wash with estimated profits over the next five years as pictured in this timeline. So we're going to put our million dollars into a car wash and in the first year it's going to earn 90,000 and then 120,000 then 200,000 then 330,000 in the last year or in year four and then finally, in the fifth year, uh, we're going to get uh, 600000 which includes selling the car wash for 200000 So we've been, so like in the last year, we expect to have a $400,000 profit plus sell the car wash for 200000 So that's a five-year time horizon. And we want to determine if that's worth our investment. So a question we need to answer is, um, is that enough income to compensate us for the risk that we're taking to put our million dollars into this business instead of that safe 3% investment? So how much do we want to earn? Well, certainly we want to get more than 3%. 3% we would consider like that to be that risk-free rate. Well, we're going to take on more risk. I mean, we're hoping this is, we're thinking this is what our income would be, but, you know, it could be much less, could be could be more. So let's, let's just assume that we've decided that uh, we would need to get a 15% return on this investment. So we would call this our cost of capital. It's our, our required return. You might think of that as our opportunity cost. Perhaps there's some other place that we know we could get at least 15%. And so uh, anyway, that's what we've determined to be our cost of capital. So how are we going to evaluate this? Well, we could, as we learned last week, we could find the present value of each of these annual cash flows. So we would divide the first one by one plus the interest rate of 15%, get the present value of that first cash flow. The second one would be divided by 1.15 squared, the third one by 1.15 to the third, and so on. So if we were to find the present value of all of those future cash flows and add them up, so that would give us the present value of those future cash flows. Well, let's compare that 
to the outlay that we have at the beginning and so the the present value the future cash flows minus the initial investment uh, gives us what's called the net present value net of that initial outlay so in this case it'd be negative so in other words the the cost today's cost which is a million dollars is more than the present value of the future benefits so if the net present value is negative that means that this investment is not providing the minimum rate of return that we're after 15 percent and so we would not want to accept that if it had a positive net present value then uh, it would be acceptable now in addition to net present value we may also want to think about okay well how long is it going to take us to get our money back we call that the payback period so and that's kind of the simplest case I could have started with it so again we're laying out a thousand a million dollars at the beginning I'm not talking thousands but it's really made laid out a thousand dollars at the beginning and then we get ninety dollars back in the first year and then 120 and then 200 then 330 after four years we've accumulated a total of seven hundred forty dollars of cash profit so we still have some fraction of that fifth year to go well we're trying to recover a thousand dollars total we've got 740 after four years so we need another 260 so 260 out of the last year profit of 600 would tell us the fraction of amount of time there so it ends up being um, 4.43 years the four years four complete years plus almost half of that last year would be the payback um, so we found the present value of all these future cash flows I mentioned last week that I'd show you how to do this if you were using Excel so in Excel there's a NPV function so you go over to the financial formulas and scroll down to the NPV and so what that's going to do it's going to you first of all give it the rate in this case 15 percent and then so you designate the the um, sale that that's in and then you tell it the different cash flows that are going to be out there now not counting the first one don't give it that initial one so we have 90 in the first oops sorry the rate is 15 percent and then the first value is 90 the second value is 120 third value 200 fourth value 330 and then finally the last value is 600 and so if we return that we can see that 787.49 that's the present value of those future cash flows that we then compare to that initial cost so that's the NPV function so you may want to give that a shot um, let's do another quick example down here let's say there's another business opportunity that gives us we have here's our thousand dollars of investment and it gives us annual income of 225 300 and 350 then 400 then 900 and this particular the 900 includes a 500 dollars sale so over time the annual income will accumulate to 2175 and um, the payback period remember we were investing a thousand so this particular one after three years has accumulated 875 so it needs another 125 out of the $400 in year four so that ends up being almost a third of that last year so it's it's the three years plus 
125 out of the 400. That's the payback period. What fraction of that final year does it take to get the payback? We can also find the net present value of this investment. Remember, we would take the present value of each individual cash flow, divide by 1 plus i to the nth power, or we could use the NPV function. And again, let me uh, go through that. So scroll down to the NPV. And the rate, again, is 15%. That's our cost of capital, the required return that we're uh, wanting to make it worth our while. And then the uh, investment value, the, the value, the annual cash flow values would be 225, 300, 350, 400, and then finally that $900 amount. And you can see already the, the readout here is at 1328. So again, that's the present value of the future cash flows. That's what I added up present value of each, each of those individual cash flows. <clears throat> and in this case, if we compare it to our initial cost of a thousand, then we have a positive net present value. And so uh, this would be acceptable. That means that this investment is exceeding that required return of 15%. Okay, so let's go to a couple of other examples. And um, these, <clears throat> so this comes under the general heading of capital budgeting. We're trying to, to make decisions about where to invest uh, money that will generate profit um, or perhaps will cut expenses. So uh, I think a great example to visualize is if a company was going to put in some kiosks to uh, allow customers to check themselves out or to place their own order. So that's going to replace uh, labor. So you've got this upfront cost for that investment, but you've got some savings coming in the future, not necessarily generating revenues, but saving expenses. So uh, let's say we have uh, here's an example. Your company is evaluating a new technology to automate a production process. The upgrade will require an initial investment of $100,000. I've got that right down here in time period zero. And will result in savings over the next five years of $24,000, $28,000, $30,000, $50,000, $100,000, Thirty, twenty-five thousand and fifteen. So twenty-five and fifteen. And our cost of capital is twelve percent. So we're going to evaluate this investment using the payback period, the net present value, and also what's called the internal rate of return. So uh, the payback period. We're investing a hundred thousand dollars. So after a year, we've got 24,000, still need 76. Then we get 28, still need 48,000 in terms of getting our money back. Then we get 30, still have 18 to go. In the next year, we're going to get 32. So 18 out of 32, that would be the fraction of the year that we're after in that fourth year. So the payback, if you divide it out, is 3.5. Five, six. It's three years plus 18 out of 32 would be the payback period. The present value, um, I've got the net present value function here. Let me put it here just to kind of show the comparison. So we would go to the NPV function. The rate, again, is 12%. And then the value over each of these future years. The first value is 24,000. Second one is 28. Third one is 30. 
the fourth one is 32 the fifth one is 25 and the sixth one is 15 and so you can see it here 107 225 um, so the that's the present value of the future cash flows which we would then compare to the hundred thousand so we have a positive net present value of seven two two five so that would be acceptable I want you to see the the math comparison again if we took each of these individual cash flows and divide them by one plus i or the second one divided by 1.12 squared and so on if you added up all of those present values you would get 107.225 that's what we got using that NPV function compare it to the hundred thousand that it's costing you and there's your net present value of 7225 so that's positive meaning that this investment is giving us at least that 12 percent return um, so what you might wonder is okay if it's given us at least 12 percent what is the true rate of return that it's earning in other words uh, we're, we're having to invest a hundred thousand now and it's given us these cash flows what would the what does that come out to be exactly in terms of the rate of return so um, it's kind of a it's an iterative process that you go through to find that and so I've already done it to be 14.61 so um, in other words if we were to let the cost of capital be equal to that 14.61 then it re, when it goes through that, it ends up giving us the NPV of zero. So that's, that's what the IRR, the internal rate of return is. It's that rate of return that would cause the net present value to be zero. Okay, let's uh, go through one more example over here in the, in the TAN, just so you can see it again. And um, let me, let's talk through the theory for just a second. So remember that present value is if you take the cash flow at any point in time, time period t, and you divide that cash flow by 1 plus i to the t power, and you add all those up, that's what this summation is, for every cash flow, then that would give you the present value. And if that present value, if you include that initial cash outlay at time period zero which is already present value so um, that nets out that would give you the net present value of all those cash flows and if the net present value is positive then it would be an acceptable um, investment uh, whenever the net present value is zero whatever interest rate you plug into there to give an exact zero net present value that would be considered the internal rate of return so let me um, try that one more time with this other example so <clears throat> we're looking at an eighty thousand dollar investment that will give us future cash flows of 21 21 20 well 21 over the whole six periods so this one is even cash flows and we call that an annuity. An annuity is a series of equal cash flows. So uh, let's look at the payback real, real quick. The payback, $80,000 investment. So after three years, we have um, had positive cash flow of 63, still need 17. So 17 out of that 21 is 0.81 years. So it's three years plus a little over 80 percent of that fourth year that would be the payback period 
In terms of present value, if we took each of those $21,000 cash flows, I got them listed out right here, and divide it by 1.12, or the second one, divide it by 1.12 squared, and so on, and added up all those present values, then um, that gives us the sum of those future values is 86,340. If we throw in the $80,000 investment, it comes out to a net present value of 6,340. That's positive, so that means we're earning at least more than that 12% return. Um, to calculate it again using the NPV uh, function, so um, passed it up. There's NPV. So again, the rate is 12%, and the value is 21 in each of those periods. I had uh, six of them. So. So one more here. So there's the present value, eighty-six three forty. And so that's what that NPV function does. Since we have equal cash flows, we could use the PV function, and again, that's for an annuity. So. Um, in Excel, PV is for an annuity equal cash flows. NPV is when you have unequal cash flows in the future. So the the uh, PV function, let me show you real quick. Is we have a rate of 12% uh, we have six periods and the payment each period is 21,000 and so that returns 86 334 and I guess I had that in there as a well anyway even in red it shows up as a negative number we could have offset that with a negative sign um, and one other thing for comparison purposes is if I showed you last week the tables in the back of the Perino textbook, Appendix A. So remember that those table factors are the reciprocal. So like here, I'm dividing by 1 plus i to the n. Well, if you want to multiply, you would multiply by 1 over that. So that's what each of these is. It's one over um, each of those factors that I had here. And again, those come from the uh, lump sum table for individual amounts, or if you added them all up, uh, that would be the table fact. 4.11 is the table factor for an annuity um, in the back. So, uh, I hope you'll get out your Excel and let practice with it as you're working some of the homework problems. And I hope you have a lot of fun with this, and we will take care of your questions uh, in our sync session. Y'all have a great week.